This episode of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on February the 8th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can start up now. I've only got a couple of minutes to go, and uh, if there's a straggler, there's a straggler. <laughs> um, any questions from uh, what we covered last week? Any issues? Any confusion? No? What did we cover last week? <laughs> I'd have to go back and look. Um, well, if there are no questions, no errata to take care of right now, we'll uh, dive into Windows 10 again. Uh, I'm going to pretty much stick to um, doing things with Windows 10 unless there's something very specific about Windows 7. Uh, because everything that you can do in Windows 7, you can do in Windows 10, it's just a little bit flakier, jankier than what you're used to in Windows 7. Um, and right now what I want to do is go through um, that old chestnut, right click is your friend. Because there's lots of things to do in Windows 10 with right click. So let's start off, first off, um, down here your Windows icon, down in the uh, lower corner, we all know that if we just click on it, it's going to open up a menu panel like this one. Um, when it says life at a glance, we'll come back to that. But here are the latest program or the last programs that you have used on the computer are listed here first. Then when you go a little further down, um, you can add more programs uh, to the bottom of this list, but I don't recommend it. What you have here is fine. You have a place to turn your computer off and on, to get at the settings, and to get at the file explorer. When I say that's your, that's your file manager. When we open up the file explorer, it's going to bring us to what's called quick access. Essentially, quick access is the recent files that you have used, where they were located on the desktop, downloads, documents, wherever. And then um, it's showing you folders that you have used frequently on this computer. Um, so if you're constantly going back to documents, it will be there, okay, in the quick access. And again, I'll show you where the quick access comes from. It is click on your windows and click on File Explorer. And there you go, the quick access File Explorer. Um, on this uh, File Explorer window, you can dig down further into the computer, um, but Really, let's leave that uh, for another day when we talk, when we dig way down into File Explorer. It can do some fantastic things, but for right now, we'll just say, say that that's that. Now that's clicking on it, okay? Um, on your keyboard, you also have a, a Windows key. It looks like that or the old wind styled Windows key, if you click on that, it opens it up again, quickly. And this is a sh keyboard shortcut, something you can remember. If you need to go to um, your, um, you need to go to this menu quickly, okay? Yes, yeah, just simply tap on it. You wanna shut down quickly rather than mess around with your mouse. Use your arrow keys to move up and down. 
okay? And then you can, uh, once you've gotten to where you want to be, in this, in this instance, power, it's going to open that up. You can go yeah, a couple of more arrow keys up, and now you're in the shutdown mode, okay? Quick access. That's really what it's all about, is quick access. to Rather than fiddling and fumbling around with your mouse, trying to find the damn thing, if you've got, if you've got a white screen uh, and a whitish mouse, you're looking all over for it, okay? This is a quick way to get at what you want. Now, we go back here to the, to the Windows uh, icon again. And right at the very bottom, there's an entry for all apps. Well, let's use its real name, all applications. Apps are included. Now, an app and an application in Windows 10 are two entirely different things. Okay? You have a mail app, this up here. That will do your mail in a, in a big, bulky way. It, there is no refinement to it. You open that up to see if you got mail. Um, Microsoft Edge is another app. It's your, it's your default web browser, but it's not the same as an application like Google Chrome or Firefox or even Internet Explorer. This is an app to get you on the web. It's not an application. There are a bunch of them. Your, your, uh, your weather app, um, Skype calling is now an app. It's not an application. All kind of stuff like that. Um, if the difference is that for the most part, apps are stripped down versions of the program you want. If you're just doing something simple in Skype, calling your friends, you click on it, click your friend, call them, okay, use the app. If you need to do something a little more complex, like um, getting more than one caller on the line, you can do that in Skype. Um, fiddling with your cameras to make sure everybody sees what they want to see, stuff like that. You do that in the application. In the app, it's just click and talk. The same with mail. You open up the mail app, it's pretty simple. You just see the mail that's come in. If you want to do more complex stuff with your mail, I suggest that you use an application like Windows Live Mail. Okay, and by opening that, you can do more complex stuff in your mail rather than the, the app, which is a stripped-down version of mail just to show you something quickly. Uh, that, that's not a bad thing, I suppose. It's not a bad thing. So, okay, so we've clicked on all apps and show us our applications. And um, our applications, our apps, are now in the menu in an alphabetical form, okay? So um, there's Google Chrome and Groove Music, G. Image Burn, uh, iTunes, under I. And down the list it goes. M for mail, and down the list it goes. They're in alphabetical order. Not the way, sort of what they used to be in Windows 7, sort of in alphabetical order, but then a lot of times the applications would be buried inside a folder, okay, like um, the, your accessories folder, okay. If you wanted to go hunting for your calculator, you went looking in the accessories folder for it. Not so in Windows 7. You would just simply, it's just simply there in, um, as an app, alphabetically listed. Okay? That's a small difference, but it can be an enormously quick difference if you want it. Okay? The other thing that you can do to find apps that you know you have and do it quickly is with Cortana. Search the web and Windows. 
Cortana wants to be your friend. Cortana wants to be helpful. She is a dizzy bitch who doesn't know her ass from her ears. You have to tell her everything. I want to write that down. <laughs> okay. So if you, there, a simple way to find an app is just to click inside of Cortana and start typing. C-A-L-C. -C. Comes up with calculate. Okay, hit enter, and there's your calculator. If you start talking to Cortana, she may very well get very confused very quickly. So, not enabling Cortana's full function, uh, that's recommended. Unless you, you're really geeky and you want to talk to your computer all the time, just Type in to Cortana what you want. Um, like I said, she gets confused really, really easily. Um, typing things into this search window here. If you know you have a file that you've used in the last week or two, and you sort of know its name, you can do a rough search by sort of know its name. Okay, it will come up with suggestions for you. Is it this? Is it this? Did you use it here? And eventually you can narrow it, narrow it down to a file that you may have, you know you used it a couple of weeks ago, but um, you can't remember its full name or even its location. This is a good way to find things like that. How did you get past all the pictures that were just there? Oh, here? Just start typing. As soon as you start typing, these pictures will go away. Okay? So it's talking to the internet. It's saying, uh, you might be interested in uh, the newborn movie that uh, was uh, just uh, popped up on, uh, on the football game yesterday. Okay? Well, I didn't either, but I found it on the internet that uh, this morning that the newborn movie was its first advertisement was on the football game yesterday. They hadn't even named it until Friday. So it's, it, it makes a recommendation of things that you might want to watch or look into. Um, see more news on Bing.com. Uh, ignore Bing. Um, and so uh, once you start, if you start typing, you've got these pictures up. Uh, it will give you all kinds of recommendations. Now, I just put in three letters, C-A-L, but it's given me uh, my calculator, my LibreOffice calculator, my calendar, um, my calligraphy brushes and documents, um, yeah, callbacks, a call history, okay? So it's making suggestions that it's saying, come on, I've got some stuff here for you. It, just look carefully. You'll probably find what you're looking for, especially a file name if you're not sure what it is. But, you know, you called it George something. Well, start typing G-E-O-R, G-E-O-R, and eventually George somethings will come up, all kinds of them. It will go searching the Internet for George. Um, okay, that's, that's our, our Windows um, icon here. Now, I showed you that uh, these life at a glance things here, these tiles, which is what they are, they're called tiles. Um, you can go through these and you can put them in an order that you might think would be helpful to you, simply by dragging them. And so, um, I think... Um, Come on, don't do that. I think I might like to have uh, very close to me uh, where I can find it easily is my application for Flipboard. Okay, but it's, it's down on the bottom of the list. Okay, I'd like to be able to open my uh, my menu and see it right away, see it at the top. So what you can do is hold down your left mouse button, 
which captures it, and then start moving it. And you can move it to wherever you would like. In this case, I'll put it right here. Okay, so now it's at the top of my menu. All right, and I can get at it right there. It's, it's right there with Edge and my photos and the phone company and all the rest of it. But I like Flipboard, so I like to have it handy. That's a good way to do this. Rather than, by the way, going through the menu options here under all apps. Now you've got to click on all apps and use your mouse to search down to letter F and there you'll find Flipboard. It's right here. Right there. Quickly done. Quickly done. Um, now, um, let us just say that you have an app in your computer, you know you have it, but it's not listed in this life at a glance thing. Okay, You can put an app inside of this. And I'm going to attempt that right now. Uh, Pogo is a website. It's not an app. Okay. Okay. Gmail, so. Is Gmail an app or, an, or a, It's a website. Or an app, uh, it's a, uh, well. I can't get it on my start menu. I try it. Yeah. It's, uh, if you're going to the web page for Gmail, yeah. it's a web page. You can't do that. And you can't get that on your start. No. Uh, you, you might uh, in Windows 10. <coughs> yes. Okay. You can right click. Um, you can open up the uh, the web browser yeah. and right click on the address bar okay and you should get an option to pin to start menu yeah. okay yeah. it should be there okay let's uh, talk about VLC here's VLC right here up there and it's not in this it's not in my life at a glance thing so I'm going to open it, and I'm going to go to my VLC media player right here, okay, my VLC media player right here, and if I right click on it, it does some things for me. I can pin it to the start menu. When I say pin to the start menu, what I'm really saying is pin it to here. Pin it to that. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I might have to move it after I'm done, but I can do that. So pin to start menu. Okay, and it put it at the bottom of the list. But I know that I have room at the top of the list, so I'm just going to grab it with my mouse, with left click, hold left click, and start moving it up to the top. Keep going, boys. Keep Even going. If you didn't have room up there, it would just replace something. Yeah, it would move something around. Okay, so now I have my VLC right here, ready for me to open up and get anything that I want. It's that simple. Right click is your friend. I've been doing all of this with right click, except for the left click capture. All of this is available in right click. Um, now, here's another cool thing you can do with right click. Um, Remember in Windows 7 or Windows XP, if you right click on the task bar down here, you got some options. And one of them was open up task manager, which was really handy. So you get your computer under control if it went nuts on you. Well, you can still do that. You can still right click here. And there's our old friend task manager. Okay. Um, and you can still get at it. But there's another place you can right click and get even more stuff in Windows 10. And that is right clicking your Windows icon. Okay? If you right click on that, oh boy, the stuff you're going to see. Um, in this top menu, okay, it's giving you. Um, shortcuts to the things that you would probably need to do the most 
in servicing your computer and getting it under control. So programs and features, you want to be able to go to that all the time to look and see if a program got loaded that shouldn't be there, or you want to take that old program off, or you want to just see what's there just, just to be sure that you have what the computer says it is. Okay, programs and features. The mobility center, well, that has to do um, with, uh, with power options, telephones and stuff like that. There's power options right there. Event viewer. Okay, event viewer. Let's just look at that because, boy, event viewer can really be something special. Um, Windows logs and it will tell you that there are all kinds of things going on with your computer under Windows logs. Um, these scammers um, will get you to open up your event viewer. They'll show you how to do it. They'll tell you how to do it. Okay. And They'll tell you, start scrolling down here and, and see how many warnings and, and errors you have, okay? Warning, 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 errors, 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 they're everywhere. There must be something wrong. And the scammer will say, you have malware up the wazoo, we can help you. Get your wallet out, we're going to help you. Yes, for a price. In fact, what they've shown you is completely and utterly, totally normal for a Windows computer. A brand new one will show this stuff up in a couple of days that there are things that happened with the service didn't start correctly or it was shut down incorrectly, there was an error in the service, nothing works perfectly in Windows, but it all works. This little window right here, if someone wants you to go and look at it, hang up on them. They don't know what they're doing and they will just screw your computer up I can give you the name of a lady that happened to last week, and boy, did it cost her. Okay, event viewer. It's, there's no reason for you to go there, because first off, you won't understand what's in there, and the second reason is, it's lying to you. So why is it free <laughs> um, For really deep digging down into something that's going wrong with Windows, it's a good place to go for a technician like me. Okay, but for the most part, it's going to lie to you. Okay, yes? Every time I went to Windows Live Photo Gallery, yep. the event viewer would open up and it would tell me somebody is doing something to my location. I would think that that would be a lie. Well, <laughs> How do you get it to I stop? I don't there. know. I didn't touch it because I didn't yeah. know when I just got out of there. Yeah. And, and then it would... Every single time, I think even now, I'm going to go home and try that, open up Windows Live Photo Gallery and see if my event viewer comes. Yeah, uh, Google that. Google that. Windows, uh, Windows Live Photo Gallery, and then in, in uh, quotes, event viewer. Okay. And if there is something going on with that program and event viewer, it'll show you that other people have this and you can read what they've done about it or whether there's anything to do about it. All right. Uh, okay, back, back to our right click on the windows. Um, your network connections. Okay, your network connections are down here. Okay, uh, your, your uh, ethernet connection and your wireless connection are down there. But if you click on here, um, network connections, it's going to open a w window that's going to tell you all about them. Okay? Whether they're active, whether they're turned off, um, your Bluetooth is not connected, and the local area network's not plugged in, and I'm using wireless. Yes? Is this the control panel 
Control yes. Panel, only just a little bit bigger. Or? It's it's the control panel um, broken broken out into its most useful components. Okay. I have control panel on this computer. I have it on the desktop, right here. But um, this is a. If you don't want it, you don't have to go there. You can go to the most useful components of it. All right. Um, and here again, like the uh, control panel is here, by the way. Uh, task manager is here as well to get your computer under control. The file explorer. Now, if I if I open this file explorer, it should open in my computer. No, it opened in Quick Access. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And um, the other thing that you have here is the run command. Okay, the run command. The run command is the same thing as the Cortana search window down here. Okay, but you can put something in the run command to open and it will. Now, a lot of times, if uh, you will be good, if you're looking for a repair, you'll be given instruction on, on to copy a line from, from, uh, from a suggestion on how to repair and put it in a command prompt. Okay, this is where you put it in under run command. But that's only if you're really, really courageous <laughs> and um, you can um, and you understand fully what's being asked of you. Okay, if not, please don't do that. Um, okay, MS config. This will open up MS config because that's the last place I was in it. And um, and there you go. Here's here's up all, uh, all of your startup items. You can turn them on, turn them off, and all of that. So that's a good rundown of right click on the Windows command button. Okay. Now. Let's just go wandering around. As I said before, you can right click on the taskbar and it will give you some options here that you can open things like um, if there are toolbars available, the address bar, the links bar, the iTunes bar, desktop, all of those are available to you to open. Uh, if you want to search for something, you can um, show, show the search box or you can show hidden files or icons um, like that. Um, so that's that's right clicking on the task bar here. Um, if you right click on an icon in the task bar, it's going to give you some things to do. I've right clicked on Google Chrome and it's showing me the places that I have been in Google Chrome uh, of late. I've gone to Amazon to buy stuff. I opened up my uh, Facebook account, had a look in there. Um, I was into Chrome to turn notifications on and off. And by the way, I logged into Netflix on this. Okay, It shows me a lot of stuff. Uh, and it can show me how to open a new window. And by the way, a new incognito window. Incognito simply means that the computer will not tell the internet who you are. You can just surf. A nice thing to have. Okay, if you want to. How do you get one of them? <laughs> How do you get one of them? In, win in Windows 10, um, you right click on, um, your, um, on your browser and it will give you the option to go surfing incognito. Only no, uh, it will do that with Firefox and with, uh, let me see if it will do it with... Uh, regular Chrome too? No, it, uh, yes, regular Chrome. Uh, no, it doesn't do it with Edge, but it will do it with uh, Internet Explorer and Firefox. Okay. Um, so there you go. That's, that's right-clicking on an item in the taskbar. 
I'm going to right click on the file folder here and here again you get a lot of the things that where you were recently the desktop um, this address here is part of my network so I went to that address I can always go back to it um, things that I looked for on YouTube um, videos that I was working with a PowerPoint presentation that we had a little while ago. It's all there, listed as something that I used recently. By the way, if you, uh, that file that you lost, you know, sort of know its name, it could very well be listed under your file explorer, under right click, under something you used a little while ago, the name might be there. Okay. Now, this little thing here that looks like a bar of soap with two handles on it. Um, we can make more desktops if we want to. James showed you how to do that. So if you want to make two or three desktops, a good way to move back and forth between them is to use this little icon here that looks like a bar of soap. If you click on that, it will show you that you can either make a new desktop or it will show you the number of desktops you have open. Okay, so um, I'm not going to do that right now, but there you go. That will show you the number of desktops or allow you to make a new one. Making a new desktop and keeping them Okay, um, you want to have your email open all the time. You got stuff coming in and out all the time. Your friends are always trying to contact you, maybe Skype too. Okay, you want to surf the net. And you want, and the reason you want to surf the net is you need some information for a document you're working on. Put the document in desktop one. Put an open internet page in desktop two. Put your mail and Skype in desktop three. You can have all of these open and they're not in your way. And you don't lose them when you shut down. And you don't lose them when you shut down. They'll stay there. They'll close, but those three desktops will be there and then you can just repopulate them when you open. That's cool. I like that. Okay. Okay, well, let's do it. <laughs> so I've clicked, I've clicked on the little bar of soap with handles. And over on the side over there, it says new desktop. So I've made a new desktop now. So there's desktop one, desktop two. Okay, so I'm going to click on one. It opens it up. Click on the little bar of soap. It shows me desktop two. Let's do this. Let's open um, Microsoft Edge in Desktop 2. And go back to Desktop 1. And um, I'll open LibreOffice. Okay, so Desktop 1, here we are in LibreOffice. Desktop 2. Well, no, you, yeah, uh, you sort of have to click on it. Yeah. Okay, now from there, to get to Hotmail, I have to click on whatever it's showing, the news, wait for it to go back to MSN before it'll show me a Hotmail thing of me. Okay, right. and this is Microsoft Edge, right? Yes. Okay. Um, up here at the top, yeah. where it says search or enter a web address. Well... MSN is not that complicated. MSN.ca. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Just enter the web address. Oh, okay. Why don't you just use notifications? Oh, you can do that too. Mine is Windows Live. Okay, you have Windows Live Mail? Yeah, that's Okay, and, and uh, you're not using uh, Outlook.com? 
You use Outlook.com? Yeah, but on the top it says Windows Live always. Okay, hang on. We'll go back here. Well, I'm seeing I'm XP, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. Let me uh, open this up again. Okay. So, so you want to use uh, Hotmail in Outlook.com? Yeah. Okay. Type it in there. Type it in, in this address line. Outlook.com. Let's see what we get. Dot com. And it's showing you the login for live.com, for Windows Live Mail. Okay? But it's, in fact, the, uh, the Outlook.com web page. Yeah. This is what you're looking for? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, it's, that's the way mine comes up. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Here. A fast way to get to it is just simply enter the address you want. Yeah. Um, now, if you're going to three or four or five or maybe a dozen addresses a day, okay, it doesn't hurt to write them down on a piece of paper for a while till you get them in your head. And then um, going to them um, it's quicker to go to them by typing them in pogo.com than it is than it is to you know go searching around for a damn favorite button that you can't find anyway. Well, you had put it on my desktop. Yeah. That I yeah. That's that can be done as well. Okay, so. A lot of times, folk, um, you think it's more complicated to get at that keyboard and ask the computer to do something with the keyboard when you know there's a shortcut to it somewhere. A lot of times, folk, it's a lot easier just to type it in. Can you get a Pogo desktop shortcut Should be able to. You can't. Okay, let me, let me show. Yeah, let me show you. Uh, you can uh, you can't do this uh, with uh, um, with Microsoft Edge, but you can do it with uh, Internet Explorer and with Chrome. Okay, I'm going to do it right here. I'm I'm just going to click inside my address box, right here. I'm going to type in pogo.com. Okay, it's asking me for a screen name and such and all of that crambola. Um, what I can do here, once I've got logged in and told the computer remember me, is I can go to up, up to the address bar here. You see the little squares beside HTTPS? Hold down the, le the left mouse button, capture it, and just drag it over to your desktop. And there it is. Pogo, the website, is on your desktop. It's that simple. You can do that with Outlook Mail. Do, do, so I do that with Gmail. Then. Yes, you can do that with Gmail. Uh, you can do that with uh, with with Rogers Cable Mail. All of them. If it's on a web page, you can make a shortcut to it on your desktop. And then from there, you could put it on your start screen. Yes, from here you can put it on your start. Uh, your well, actually, no, I don't think you can. Um. Let me see here. Let me see if it'll go down here. Okay. What I've done is I've pinned it by by pulling it down from here to my to my Google Chrome icon on the taskbar. I've pinned it to Google Chrome, okay? So you'll see it as, as an entry now. Play free online games, okay? Um, there's a hundred ways to do this, folks. Um, a lot of the time... Um, but now when you hit that Google Chrome thing, it doesn't bring you to Google Chrome, it'll bring you to Pogo? Is that what Um. If I right click, if I right click, yeah, yeah. If I right click 
on Google Chrome, it shows me at the top that I have pinned that website to Google Chrome. Play free games online. Okay? I can... There you go. I don't know what you're clicking on, but that is the way to do it. Yeah, go over this a couple of times from the video, and uh, you know, and see if you can get a couple of times. Do it a couple of times through the video, and uh, see if you can get it to work. Once it does, you'll find out how easy it is. Um, okay. Now, uh, we're still in right-click mode here. Um, these icons over here on the far side, I have uh, a number of them that I have told the computer that I want to have open when the computer opens. Uh, one of them is Dropbox. Okay, so if I right-click on Dropbox, it will show me everything that I've done in Dropbox in the last little while. I put uh, a uh, I put an image up in there of a computer that I'm trying to sell. So there it is, right there. I put it in two days ago. I have that on my on my desktop, but I didn't know what I never used. Yeah. It. Well, Dropbox, by the way, if you have if you use if you downloaded and installed the application for Dropbox. Uh -huh. Um, then if you look in uh, my PC, you will, you will find an entry for Dropbox. And if you click on that entry for Dropbox, it'll show you all the files that you put in there. But they're, they're not located on your computer, they're located in the cloud. Well, if you haven't put it in yet, hmm? I didn't know what yeah. if it's empty, that's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna. I I clicked on Dropbox now, and it's it's uh, opened up everything that I have in Dropbox, uh, the folders that I have there, and all of the programs I'm saving there, so I can get to them wherever I am. What B Dropbox has is it has a public folder. So if you want to share something with one of your friends, a photo or something, and it's too big to send by mail, you can put it in Dropbox. And then you can give your friend the address for your Drop Dropbox public folder, and they can go look. You give them a password, and they can look inside the public folder. It's cool. That's Dropbox. I also have one here for uh, OneDrive, um, but that's just because I have it. Um, depending on your computer, whether it's a laptop or not, you may very well have uh, um, hardware for Bluetooth connections. Okay, Bluetooth connections mean that if you use a Bluetooth connection, you can use one to your, uh, if you have a Bluetooth receiver on your stereo, you can send music from your computer to your stereo through Bluetooth. That is really cool as well. Um, you can go to websites that have your favorite music and use Bluetooth to send it to your stereo. Really, really cool. Um, also here, um, for most computers um, is the icon for your graphics card and so you can open up um, your graphics card and manipulate it. You can change um, how your display works, whether, whether you can work in 3D, um, the support options you have, videos and powers and profiles and stuff like that. That's usually always on um, a more modern computer, how to get at your graphics card. And as I said before, um, my internet access is uh, Wi-Fi wireless, okay? That's that little radio thingy down there. If I click on that, if 
if I left click on it, it should open up and show me what I'm connected to here in the village and everything else around me that is close by that I might be able to connect to. About the, yeah, I've got three things here that I might be able to connect to if they weren't secured. But everything there. I do that, I get all of those connections are like that. Yeah. But mine isn't there. And I have to turn my router off and turn it back on again, and then it seems to find it. And yet, when I first turn my computer on, it's not. It's there. connecting all right, though, right? No. It's not connecting? No. Not unless I, I turn the router off and back on again. Yeah. Well, I'd say that that's a problem with Roger's equipment, not yours. Which is strange because my wife has a laptop with the same connection. Yeah. And hers is connected. Yeah. I don't know why that might be. And that's what we're doing at wireless. Yeah. I don't know what that might be. Yes? In mine, I've got my network. It's secure. Yep. But my printer's open. When I connect it, it tells me to record it. Yeah. So I disconnect it. And you just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> um, for the most part, um, you have to be really, really knowledgeable to crack into a computer through an open Wi-Fi wi -Fi port on your printer. You have to be able to um, do what's called a privilege escalation to get at the computer uh, through a Wi-Fi printer. Um, it can be done, but someone would spend hours and hours and hours doing it. It's not worth it. Well, the fellow from the Geek Squad, he's the one that hooked it up. Yeah. And everything was working fine. Yeah. So your printer doesn't work anymore? Well, I don't even bother trying. Right <laughs> now, what Windows is very nicely doing for me, or Microsoft, somebody is trying to fix my printer for me. Oh, okay. Okay, it keeps turning on, and then I see uh, when I go to the printers and devices, I look at the printers and different things, and there's little clocks. My maintenance men are running around in there. <laughs> What you might have to do is um, remove the printer from printers and devices mm -hmm. and use the software um, um, to get it to reconnect um, to your Rogers um, to your Rogers wireless. That's probably what you're going to have to do. And I, I, I have confidence in you enough that I think you could probably pull it off. Just follow the instructions. It's going to, it's going to when, you, when you remove the printer, okay, restart the computer, make sure it's gone. Then put your, uh, your software disk in the computer. Okay. That one's the wrong disk for the printer. The place I bought it says it's not, but everybody else tells me it's the wrong disk for the printer. Why is that? Well, the printer's got one number on it, and this disk connects another printer. And what make is it? HP. Okay. Um, you probably have the right stuff. As a for instance, um, the software might tell you that it's an HP all-in-one 1505. But, or, or that's what's probably printed on the printer. But the software for it is an HP All-in-One 1500. It is the correct software. It's for that series. Okay, so as long as the software on the disk is in the same series, okay. 1500, 1600, okay. All-in-One, the yeah, then it's it's correct. Okay. It is correct. It it will. It will let me. It, up yeah, this, yeah, this it's door. correct. All of the drivers are there. So what you want to do is remove the printer device from devices and printers. Yep. Make it go away. Yep. Restart. Okay. Put your disk in. And let the disk load everything again. When it comes, uh, and by the way, unplug your printer okay. yep. from the computer. computer yeah. 
it will tell you when it wants to be plugged in again. Yeah. And at that point, uh, you uh, just before that, you may have to decide that you want to have a wireless printer. You'll click on that. And then it'll tell you, okay, plug me in so I can talk to your computer and I can talk to your network. And then when it's done, you just unplug and you're done. Yeah. Okay, I think you can pull it off. Well, there you go. Go and help her. If you if you can't find the disc for your printer, go to the uh, go to the manufacturer's website. Uh, essentially, what you would do was would be to go to their uh, to get what you want. Okay, you would uh, do HP um, all in one. Um, all in one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Fifteen oh five. Okay. And here it is. It's um, it's going to show you the HP um, the HP page. Now I just guessed at this. It's it's probably wrong. But uh, for your for your printer, uh, maybe the th the word you want to put in here behind everything is driver. Okay, and it will take you. It should take you to the driver download page for the latest drivers. If you don't have your disk, okay, um, and uh, you can download the drivers, put them in your downloads folder, open it up from there. It's just like having the disk. Okay. Oh, so Ken, I know somebody who's got a laptop and it's got no disk thing no. in it. Mine doesn't. And so if they want a new printer, they can do that? Yes, yes. Oh. Yes, you can download it to, directly to the computer. Oh, okay. Who would make a computer, though, without a hole for the disk? They're starting to make it. They're, they're starting to do that. Um, Chromebooks. No USB ports. Well, they will have one or two USB ports still, but Chromebooks don't have a DVD drive. How can you make music if you can't record a disc? They want you to go to the cloud to get your music. <laughs> if if it has a USB port, you can go to the store and you can buy. A DVD drive in USB, just plug it in, it works. It's about 60 bucks. Okay, uh, let's see if I can find some more um, right click stuff to show you here before we uh, run out of time. Oh, here's something I want to show you. And please bear this in mind. If something goes terribly wrong with your computer and you don't understand what it was, it's here. Right here, over here is a thing that looks like a page. Okay, an icon that looks like a page. If you click on that, it opens your action center saying that. Um, there are things that the computer would like you to do. You can ignore most things on the action center. Ignore them. They mean nothing. But the one thing that in case something happens to your computer and for some reason or other, it looks like this. Okay. It looks like that. And you can't get out of it. Somehow or other, your computer has gone to tablet mode. This is how you use a tablet with these things here. With these, with these, uh, they're, they're touch stuff. Touch tiles, okay. How would that happen? Somebody, one of your friends could, one of your grandchildren can touch it in the wrong place. It's happened. Um, 
even sometimes an update will do it. But you can, cl you can click on your uh, Windows uh, icon to your heart's content and nothing will happen. It's in tablet mode. You're stuck. Do you your settings no. You have to get out of tablet mode. And the one place to do it is over here, okay, at the bottom of the computer, a little icon that looks like a page. That's all I can describe it as, something that looks like a page. If you click on that, it will open, and you'll see that tablet mode is highlighted. Okay? Somebody has turned tablet mode on. Well, to get back to where we want to be, we have to make sure the tablet mode is turned off. <laughs> fly. Yes, that, that is a good reason to fly into a murderous rage if someone does that to you. Because uh, when, I, when Windows 10 first came out, I had a client that that happened to. And I searched for three and a half weeks before I found what it was. Three and a half weeks I searched. Why would you put tablet mode on a desktop? But there it is. She was in tablet mode on a desktop. And couldn't get anything done. The other little icon that you have here is uh, your speaker. Okay. And um, it, it, give, it can um, manipulate your volume locally or you can right click on it and you can do other things like open the mixer. Okay. And you can go to system sounds and you can do all kinds of other stuff there. Please don't mess with it. That is pretty much right click in Windows 10. Um, there's a lot to explore, especially from the Windows icon. Do some exploring. Watch the video a couple of times about how I went through this, okay? And explore, because you will find that once you've got it, once, once it starts to, to come to you that, oh, this can make things so much faster, so much easier just by simply right-clicking on that and maybe a few keystrokes and you can do exactly as you please. It's really, really cool. Any questions? We got it all down pat. Yeah. Got it all down pat? This thing, so probably a question I have is such a simple thing. But <clears throat> when I go into my email and I get an email sent to me, there's often a website to hit in order to see a movie and all that. How do, when I go to pass that on to a friend, I can pass on the whole thing, but I can't pass on that website. Now, I, I guess I now. okay. First off, you are probably violating one of the cardinal rules of safe computing by clicking on links to websites that you don't know what they are. You don't know what they are. You sent me an email and uh, the attachment don't come. Yeah, but you're, you're clicking on a link to watch a movie or bring up another website or whatever. This is dangerous. Um, unless you're absolutely sure that the person that has sent this stuff to you knows what they're doing and it's safe to do. Other than that, curiosity could cost you a lot of money. Because once you have started that process by clicking on a link of opening a web page, and it's a malicious web page, stuff will download in the background that you don't know about. It will load onto your computer and you don't know it. It will start running in the background and you don't know it, 
and it will do stuff. So, um, like I said, it's unless you're absolutely sure um, that uh, what you're about to click on and open is okay, don't touch it, especially an email. Um, now, if you can divine from the address that it's a YouTube video, as one of mine might be, I'll show you a YouTube address here. Okay, here is a YouTube address of all of the club videos. And it says right, in, right at the very beginning, www.youtube.com. Any other video would just have a bunch of random numbers after it. Okay? YouTube videos are generally okay. Generally okay. You can play with them. You can watch them. Videos from other websites, even CNN or some other news outlet, outlet like CBC or something like that can be spoofed. And someone may send you this and say, check this out. You'll laugh yo off. Okay? Don't do that. Yeah, uh, malware bytes is supposed to take care of stuff like that, but it's after the fact. There's nothing standing between your computer and that malicious website to stop what's going to happen next. Okay, it's after the fact the fix. And if it gets away from you, it can cost you a lot of money. So, um, now if you want to send this on to somebody, what will happen is let's just open up a YouTube video here. Understanding gravity, yum. I was watching that last night. Um, you'll see that at the top of the page in the address bar is youtube.com and a bunch of numbers. That is unique to the video. So if you want to send that to somebody has sent it to you and YouTube page opened, Okay, you can, you can take this by highlighting it. No, I just clicked on it and highlighted it. But if it doesn't, you can, uh, you can click up on the address bar and you can hold down the left mouse key and move the cursor right across to highlight everything. Then you can right click. Oops. Went too far. Right click and you can copy and then you can paste that address into your new email. Okay? Put an address into the sender, off it goes. It's that simple. Copy and paste. But it's usually at the bottom of an email, that, that address. Yeah, that's when you get it. Okay, if you want to send it to someone else, you simply forward. And it will send everything in the email forward. Okay, so if you want to forward our club videos when you get my email tomorrow, just forward it to whoever you want to. And it will send those links to them. If you've opened the link and you want to, and, and, uh, uh, and you want to send the YouTube page, that's how you do it. Yeah. Highlight it, copy it, and then paste it into a new email. That's it, folk. Our hour is up. Thank you so much. I'll get this out to you as quickly as I can.
That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.